what you're looking at is the Yamaha CS15D. Now, I know a lot of people think that this is the cheap preset version of the CS15. And in some ways that's true because you certainly don't have access to the functionality that you do on the CS15. But this is an excellent synthesizer if you could just change your perspective a little bit. And I'll tell you how. Granted, it is a preset synth mostly. You've got these presets here and I'm just going to go through them so you can hear them. But when I go through them, I want you to listen to them without thinking about what they're named. In fact, I'm not even going to say the names of these instruments. I'm just going to go through them, pressing buttons, and I want you to listen to them, and I want you to imagine what you would need from analog synth on stage. Listen to how well this covers your bases. That's what I want you to do. Okay, that is the top channel of presets. And even in that top channel, you have covered a variety of sounds that you would want out of an analog synthesizer. And I think you can see where I'm going with this. I'm basically going to tell you that while you don't have control over each of these sounds, which is sort of the definition of a synthesizer for me, they're still giving you the sounds you'd probably be making anyway. So it's cool. Okay, you got those presets, and but then there's another channel of presets, and let's listen to those. This is even more variety of sound. Now, I don't know what you're hearing when you're listening to that, but to me, I'm just absolutely astounded at the sounds that this synthesizer can generate because it has this frothiness, this foaminess to the sound that to me sounds like a Moog modular. And I know someone's just like freaking out right now going, oh, seriously, you think a CS15D sounds like a Moog modular. But that quality of sound cannot usually be found in your standard analog monosynth. And I think largely it's because what you have here are two different synthesizers. It's set up just like the CS15. You have two entirely different synthesizers inside this one box. For whatever bizarre reason, Yamaha decided to make a preset synth out of that. I don't really know why, but they did. So they have these different programmings for the two different synthesizers. Now, like the CS15D, each of these synthesizers in here have a high pass filter a bandpass filter and a low pass filter. So what we're probably getting, which is why the sound is so unique, is sounds that are based in the high pass or bandpass filter, which give it a different quality than your standard analog synth, which usually just has a low pass. So when you're hearing this, that's probably what you're hearing. And the filters are 12 decibel per octave, so that gives them a sort of, you know, they don't have that the range that the 24 dB that we're used to with a lot of analog monosynths, but uh, it definitely gives a sound quality that's missing from the 24 dB. There's a very, very nice low end on this synthesizer. I know everyone thinks, oh, CS15, it's very nasal, but it's got that low end. And also it's got a high pass filter with resonance. So you can jack the resonance up and get some serious low end 
if you're a Yamaha programmer anyway, which they plainly did. I've decided that that was their idea for piano, and I'm just going to point that one out because it's kind of an interesting, it actually kind of vaguely, remotely sounds like a piano. As much as an analog synth probably can. Okay. Okay, so you got these extremely cool sounds. And those are all pretty cool. Those are all, well, they would be standard analog synth sounds if not for the fact that you've got the band pass and the high pass filter going on, which makes them sort of standard sounds plus. But there's a wide range of analog synthesizer sounds covered in all of these buttons, just as I just played them. It, pretty much you've got your bases covered. There isn't a whole lot you're gonna be looking for, you know, in general, that isn't just covered by those, by doing what I just did for you. But, okay, so that's great. But they've made it so you can mix these. So your options just multiplied by some mathematic amount that I don't really understand, but I'm sure some mathematician is saying, oh, well, now your options are twice that, but I think it's, is it more than twice? Yeah, I don't know. Does not matter. What matters is now you can take these sounds, these presets, and you can layer them. You're layering the two different channels of presets. So we've got Cosmic, cosmic 3 and Cosmic 2 happening at the same time. So you can mix a sound like the xylophone, which has, you know, a fast attack and absolutely no sustain or, or absolutely no release. And then you've got this cosmic sound, which has this massive arc. And so you can layer differing sounds and similar sounds or whatever. And that opens your opportunities up massively for a preset synth, just like maybe more than any other preset ever, because you can actually layer the presets. And all of a sudden you have even more analog synth sounds you'd be looking for. And you can balance how much of each you want. So I've got this punchy string bass kind of sound on the lower channel and a horn on the top channel. And I can decide how much of each I want to hear. So there, your options just expanded even frickin' more. So that's, I mean, I could go on and on and on showing you the sounds, and maybe I'll do a separate video where I do that but your options are massive. Okay, and then let's throw on top of that even more frickin' options. Over here, we have a sustain knob, which allows you to control the release. You might be using a sound that doesn't have much of a release, like this xylophone sound, um, and you can turn that up. You can hear the release still continuing. That's probably the worst example I could have chosen, but really you can control the sustain of these presets. So you have a little bit of control over what they're gonna do. Also you have Portamento. So all of a sudden you got standard synthesizer analog sound. And then, then, you've got this brilliant slider over here. And I don't know how many brilliant sliders you've used, but if you've used like the one on the J Roland JX3P, it's crap. It's a piece of crap. It doesn't do anything. At least not without a whole lot of effort. This, this is really just a general filter cutoff control for both filters inside of the synthesizer. So you get to control that. <laughs> But what's cool about it is it's controlling the filter cutoff 
for both of the different synthesizers. And one synthesizer might have a sound that's using a bandpass filter, and another synthesizer might be, have a sound that's using a high pass or a low pass filter. And they all have their individual VCF settings. So when you're fooling with the filter cutoff point control that is the Brilliant slider, you're going to get different effects, different sounds. <laughs> As you can hear, one of the sounds was disappearing completely. We were closing the fil dot sounds filter. And so you can bring out certain timbres in certain instruments whose filter isn't being closed currently by this Brilliance controller, which again, layers on top of that some sort of mathematical, it's like geometric, really, how many different sounds you can now get out of the synthesizer just by using these controls. And then we have this great modulation section over here, um, which is controlled... It was like, uh, this is the point where modulation started to be controlled by the modulation wheel. And we have a modulation wheel here. And uh, first we have, they have it pictured as a sine wave, but it's probably a triangle. But Also, there's the square wave. We have a speed control, and uh, Yamaha has done us the great favor of pushing the frequency of this speed control to extremely fast. So you have the ability to get that really cool sort of distorted sound the LFO goes into um, the audible range. So you get that sort of distorted cool sound. Okay, we also have a square. We have sample and hold, which is an awesome thing to have a synth on a synthesizer like this. And then it has this setting called repeat, which isn't very common in uh, analog synthesizers just in general, but what it's doing is it's re-triggering the envelope. It's sending a pulse to re-trigger the envelope. Which in this case is leading to a sample and hold sort of sound. It would be different if uh, we had a different setting. And we do have the opportunity for different settings because the mod wheel has the ability to switch between the VCO, the VCF, and the VCA. So we've been listening to what it does to the VCF, but we also can do that with a VCO. So the low frequency oscillator is going into the audible range and then it is modulating the oscillator to get this really cool sound. <laughs> 